Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, episode 126. On today's episode, Jen discusses leading from where you are. One doesn't have to be in a position of authority to be a leader. And being in a position of authority doesn't automatically make one a leader. Unless you're a cat, operating at a level far above such base human concerns as leadership and authority, in which case you could ignore everything I just said. He wears yellow lenses in his glasses. His hair is an unruly mess of dark curls that he usually keeps in check with a bandana or a soft cap. He's never far away from a thick book or an iPad or some kind of device, and all kinds of music can be heard coming out of the shed day and evening. He knows you by name, and when he sees you, it's as if you are the most important person in the world at that moment, no matter who you are. And you are, for just a few moments. He can talk to you about philosophy, religion, politics, music, the stock market, sports, you name it. He's got at least one degree and maybe more, and he is a local icon. His name is Miguel, and he sells hot dogs. This last spring, I taught seven separate classrooms full of 10th graders over a two-day period, and every 10th grader in that local high school got a chance to be in my class, and every time I went through the presentation, I asked the teens if they knew Miguel, and every single time I did, huge smiles would break out across the faces of most of the class, and hands would go up, and I would hear the students, often the boys, saying to each other and to me, oh, that guy is cool, he's awesome, the hot dog guy, I love that guy. Miguel works at the hot dog stand outside a big box grocery store, much like Fred Meyer's, called the Real Canadian Superstore, or more affectionately known as Superstore, just Superstore, we call it sometimes Stupid Store. All of these stores had hot dog stands outside of them at one time where you could get a hot dog with all the fixings, a can of pop, and a bag of chips for about $2. And back in 2008-2009, the parent company decided to do away with the hot dog stand, and began to close them. And the town I live in got upset about this. They weren't having any of it. A Facebook page called Save Miguel sprung up and petitions were signed by over 2,000 people. Newspaper articles were written, protest signs, passionate letters were written to the owner. And in the end, and to the credit of the store, which is why I still shop there, while all the other hot dog stands were discontinued, Miguel's still stands today. And people go there because of him. Teenagers, children, men, women, one review on Yelp said, If the hot dog man Miguel knows your name, you live in our town. They talk about his huge smile, his enthusiastic welcome, and how they shop at that store just because of him. So why am I telling you this story, you might be wondering? Because Miguel is the epitome of a leader in a role that few would ever consider a leadership role. I even included him in my book because he is inspiring, which is what a great leader is. Miguel is a real inspiration to many. People choose to stop in to see him, even if they don't ever buy a hot dog, and he understands the power of relationship. The people of my town didn't fight so hard to keep a hot dog stand open because they love hot dogs that much. It was because they cared and respected and valued the connection that this man has with people. People regularly seek him out for advice and just to stop in for a while and contemplate the world. Leadership has very little to do with your outside extrinsic circumstances and everything to do with your inside intrinsic qualities. Anyone can be a leader in any role. I'm Jen Swanson, and welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast. This is the show that helps you to get the job, to love your work, and to advance your career. And I'm glad you're here. And today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on leadership. This episode was inspired by a request that I received from Diane Patterson in beautiful New Zealand. So thank you, Diane. I'd like to give a shout out to you. I always appreciate hearing what topics people would like to hear on the show, and so I'm really happy to accommodate when I can. 
I particularly resonate with this topic. I've done live workshops on this very subject, speaking events, and my master's degree is in leadership. So it's what I do in all aspects of my work. And because I've done a lot of work with it, I am convinced, I am absolutely convinced that every single one of you either already is or can be a leader. Leading from the inside. Leadership is not the same thing as authority. I want to get that straight right away. Um, You don't need letters before or after your name or a special title to be a leader. You don't need a title at all. Leadership is less about role and all about the choice. We all know and we have all experienced authorities, right? People who have a manager or a boss or a charge nurse or supervisor or something in their titles who are terrible leaders. I'm sure you've experienced this. I know I have experienced some terrible leaders, some terrible managers. And it's really unfortunate when that happens because it doesn't have to happen. Leadership is a skill that can be taught, but being a true leader takes more than just learning some management skills. Great leadership is not something that comes only from the outside at all. Again, as I said earlier, it's an inner thing. And that's why I called this leading from the inside. Leading people is not the same thing as bossing them around or as managing them. Not at all. It's more intuitive than that. I expect that almost every one of you listening has been or is in a leadership of some kind of role in your life, whether you know it or not. Some of you might be in a formal leadership position as well. Is anyone listening in a supervisory position? Maybe you are a parent. That is an enormous leadership role. Is anyone here looking after aging parents? Is anybody listening part of a committee or a strata, or maybe you've helped to plan a wedding or a special event. Even people who are babysitters, right, as teenagers are in leadership roles in that moment. When you are looking after a small child, uh, when you are are a babysitter, uh, you are in a leadership position. You have to look after the well-being of that little person. So you may not even realize it, but you have been in leadership before, even if it is not a formal role, and uh, quite possibly you are doing leadership now. And again, it, uh, it has a lot to do with what's going on inside you. So let's take a look at what it takes to be a leader. Think of a time when you worked with someone who had what you consider to be excellent leadership qualities. Take a moment to think about that. Uh, What one or two of um, the qualities or traits of that person that you're thinking of, uh, what, what were some of the leadership traits? What were one or two qualities that you admire about that person? What was it about that person? Are you able to name one or two? of the qualities, of the, of the traits, of the things that you enjoyed about the good leader or the great leader that you experienced. I bet you can. I'm going to name 10 basic traits of leadership. There are more. These are just sort of the, the top 10 that I think are important. And I'm going to name them. And I want you to think about how you resonate with each one. Where in your life, either at home or at work, do you exhibit any of these qualities. I bet you do. And if you do, you already have leadership qualities within you. So here are the 10. Courage. It takes courage to be a good leader because sometimes leaders are not that popular. Dependability is a a trait that makes a good leader. It's very difficult to be trusted. It's very difficult to be respected if you are not dependable. Fair-mindedness. Uh, If you are fair, if you are not favoring one over the other, if you are thinking a bit more globally than than just locally. Future focused. Uh, Are you able to think about the bigger picture and what might happen in the future as a result of what you are doing now? So are you thinking about what might be happening next rather than just focusing on what's going on right now? Honesty is another one. Very important leadership quality is honesty. Imagination. Are you able to imagine 
how something might be if it was done a certain way. Uh, what is your imagination like? Intelligence. And, and remember, there are many different kinds of intelligence. I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, your, um, uh, your intelligent, your IQ, your intelligence quotient. There's emotional intelligence, which is uh, really important in a leadership role. There is, uh, you know, on your feet, how, how, you, uh, how you work kinesthetically, right? Can you think on your feet? Can you move fast? Can you, you know, take things apart and put them back together again and have them work? There are many different kinds of intelligences. Persistence. Are you persistent? Leadership is full of failure. And are you able to just get back up and keep going and trying again? Self-confidence. Self-confidence. Uh, and that's something you can work on. Self-confidence uh, is important in leadership, especially if people are looking to you as an example. And trustworthiness. Are you tr able to be trusted in, uh, in whatever role it is that you are in? So what in this list of 10 traits do you need to work on? Where can you ramp up a trait a little bit more to be more competent in it? You know, none of these things, none of these 10 traits have to be tied to a role. No matter what job you're in, how you conduct yourself, how much pride you take in your work, what, what kind of example you set in how you show up to your job, all of these things will cause you to stand out and shine. So even, even pick one or two and work on these uh, to see if you can... Um, can improve upon them a little bit. Courage, dependability, fair-mindedness, being future-focused, honesty, imagination, intelligence, persistence, self-confidence, trustworthiness. In my book, I talk about a woman who I will never forget. She works at an educational institute that I was taking my coaching training at, uh, my uh, conflict coaching training. And her job was to make the sandwiches in the cafeteria. Now, how, you might ask, does a sandwich-making person do her job in such a way that she is unforgettable? And how do I see her as being a leader? Well, the lineup for her station snaked all the way out into the hallway, and she took her time. She looked each person in the eye, and she created a perfect sandwich with all the care and attention that she possibly could. I remember watching the knife spreading the mayonnaise to the corners of the of the bread. You know, it was mesmerizing how she did this. And I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you had to you had to experience how she did her job with such care and such pride to to perhaps understand. She smiled, she chatted, but it wasn't in a time-wasting kind of way because there was a whole lineup waiting for her. And she was efficient, she was confident, she was competent, and she was dependable. And she had the respect of everyone in the place who had ever had a sandwich, had, ever had had a sandwich made by her. She cared about her work, and I think that was the difference. And it showed. And you may wonder how that is leadership, but it is. It totally is. Even if, a, you know, if a small percentage of the people did their work with the same care and attention that the sandwich maker did, or that Miguel the hot dog seller does, this world would be a different place. You can make a difference and you can make a difference in any role. And sometimes it might not feel like you are making a difference, but if you can bring your absolute best self to the work that you do, no matter what that work is, then people are going to notice. Take a moment now to think of someone in your sphere that you see somewhere in your day-to-day -day life doesn't matter where, that stands out for you. This, this person might be in a formal, le formal leadership role. It might be a teacher that you really like, um, or maybe, maybe not. It might be a crossing guard or the person who makes you your coffee every morning at the coffee shop, or it might be a, a store clerk or a physician or a, a trainer at your gym. It, somebody that you see on a fairly regular basis that does their job really, really well. Think about that person for a moment. When I worked in healthcare, I noticed a huge difference in those who led from within in every role over those who didn't. From the housekeeping staff to the nurses' aides to the, the orderlies, the clerks, the kitchen staff, um, those who took pride in what they did and were unapologetic about it, they were leading. 
uh, I remember being able to to feel really confident that the housekeeping person, this particular housekeeping person, was going to really, really look after the people in the rooms that she was cleaning. And honestly, the housekeeping person often was the one who was in the room more, most consistently and for longer periods of time. And uh, often they listened as the patients talked and they had conversations and they made relationships, um, you know, professional ones, but relationships with patients um, and, and were often able to come and let people know if there was something going on that should be, uh, there should be, you know, some attention paid to. So it, you know, they were, and they were some of the most important people in the whole system. Because if you don't have uh, your 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 sanitation and your floors cleaned and uh, and the germs uh, looked after, you've got trouble in a hospital. So, um, uh, I used to tell the students when they were working in, as a team with everyone that great leaders came in every role imaginable, and not to play the hierarchy game, not to play the you know my role is better than your role kind of game. Because honestly, it takes. Uh, it takes everybody doing their part in their role to make uh, a team work. So, so far, this is what we know, that leadership doesn't have to be tied to your role. You don't need to be a formal authority figure to be a leader. The actions of a leader speak louder than words. So how you conduct yourself is going to demonstrate your leadership far more quickly than anything else will. We all lead at different times and in different contexts in our lives, meaning that you've already experienced doing it. You are already a leader in some capacity. We recognize great leadership when we see it and when we experience it. There are so many examples out there uh, of, uh, of great leaders and so many horrible examples. And we can learn what to do and what not to do by observing and paying attention and by emulating, by copying what we like and by rejecting what is not so good. You can you can take courses, of course. They help. You can read books. You can get a degree in it like I did if you like. But truly, you can be a student of the world by just paying attention and watching how great leaders lead and then trying it yourself. We understand what traits are important in a leader and which of the traits we think are most important. And we know this. So so why be a leader? How can it benefit you in your current role? Well, you might already be one, or you might already be seen to be being a leader, even if you aren't officially a manager or have the title. And if you do, then excellent. Then you need to, uh, you need to live up to it. You can set the tone for your workplace each day. If you are cranky and miserable, you will affect those around you. If you are pleasant and professional, others are going to pick up on that. And you have a huge influence with just your mood if you work with other people. Whether they're customers, coworkers, employees, employers, you can affect the mood around you uh, by how professional you are. You can work with autonomy in many cases. You are skilled and you use your critical thinking countless times in any given day. You can be really good at your job if you want to be, if you take the time and attention to do so. And even if you plan to not be doing this job for long, if it is a stepping stone job and you plan to do something else, remember that you're building a reference. Every day that you are pleasant, helpful, cooperative, and use the skills that you have, and if you've been on the planet for any length of time at all, you have skills, regardless of whether or not you have formal pieces of paper to prove it. Every day that you use these skills, you are contributing to your future success by building a reference. So just think about that for a minute. You, it, this might not be your end point, uh, this job that you're in. It might be a, a stopgap measure. It might be a summer job, it might be a, a evening job, it might be just the job you have to get through to get to the next thing that you want to be doing with your life, but you are building a reference. So how you do that job and what you bring to that job from within you will make a difference in the end. You can solve problems. Maybe maybe it's broken equipment or where to get supplies or how to help a customer feel better about something. Whatever it is, people often get stuck not knowing how to help. And if you can step in and help, well, you're using your imagination and you're using your initiative. 
being flexible. It's pretty much impossible to not be flexible in today's ever-changing workplace. If you're, you're thinking on your feet and adjusting on the fly, then you are being flexible. Be dependent. Be trustworthy, intelligent, honest, courageous, confident, per- persistent, and future-focused. Pick even one of these leadership traits and work on it. Improve it. Excel at it, even. So those were the traits. Those are reasons why you should uh, consider stepping into being a leader from within. And uh, what are some best practices? How can you be a great leader? Well, let's talk about about some of the best practices. All of the following things that I got, I'm going to uh, name have to do with your core values and with the style of leadership that you choose. So I'm offering you the best practices and, and what I believe based on a lot of exploring of the topic are some of the best and most effective ways to be a great leader. Lots of people are quote unquote leaders, but only some are actually very good at it and even fewer are, are great at it, but it can be learned. Like, like anything in life, um, There are really good and there are really not so good ways to approach leadership. So here are seven ways to be a great leader. The first one is to live into your choice. Leadership, true leadership from within is a choice. It's not a rank or a title. It's a choice. You can choose to follow. You can choose to wait and be told what to do all the time. You can choose to complain about things that don't go how you want them to. Or you can choose to make a difference. Leadership doesn't have to be blatant or loud or, look at me, I'm a leader. (laughs) It can be a quiet choice. But it is a choice uh, to step into it and to to look after the well-being of others to help people. Helping others might be one of your core values. I don't know. Presumably, that is why you do what you do. You chose this job or maybe it chose you. Uh, because I think that can happen. You chose to do this work for whatever reason, and hopefully for reasons that are more than just for the paycheck, but for whatever reason, here you are. If you haven't chosen it and you feel stuck or miserable or unhappy every time you think about it, then perhaps you're in the wrong place, and that's a whole other topic to discuss. But if you did choose this job at some point, then the invitation to you is to live into your choice. Another way to put this, as Simon Sinek so often says, is to remember your why. Remember why you do what it is that you do. What is it in your inner self that brought you here to this particular role? What was it that got you excited about it in the first place way back when you first started? And you know, things change. I I get it. And sometimes we end up in jobs that we really aren't happy in and that we really wish we weren't in and, uh, and that no longer suit our life or or our hopes and dreams. And and I get that. But if you are in a job that you have to be in for a little bit longer, um, then just just remember that you are building a reference and that you did choose to do this at some point. And so the invitation again is to live into that choice. Number two is to excel at what you do. Actions speak louder than words. And I'm thinking of the sandwich making woman again. She didn't have a sign on her that said sandwich making expert. She didn't have to have a sign on her that said that. She she didn't need it. Great leaders do what they do to the best of their abilities. And, and you can coast. Yes, you can coast along. You can get lazy. You can keep your head down and just do the minimum. And we all knew, know people who do just that, right? I bet you can name some people right now that you know, that are coasting, that are just doing what they have to do to get to the end of the day. And these people are not great leaders. They're surviving. They are coping and they're just getting through each day. And sadly, there are a lot of people doing that. Great leaders look for opportunities to learn new things, to risk a little, to be courageous, to improve upon their skills. If in your core values you have uh, the value of doing things right, (laughs) some of us are a little bit along the perfectionist line. If you take pride in doing well, if you have a little bit of that perfectionist quality in you, if you're motivated to grow, then you can excel at what you do. 
even if you have done this work for 20 years, there is something that you can get better at. Communication, for instance, as I say many times in this show, is a practice. It's not something that you can become excellent at and then just check a box, done. It is a lifelong practice. As you are well aware, things change at rapid speed in technology. Things change in processes. Things change in new innovations and ideas and practices. And you can't help but learn new things all the time. So take it on. Become excellent at doing something, just anything. Number three is be humble. A great leader isn't all about being bossy or being top dog. Great leaders don't move people by pulling rank or by telling them how it's going to be or by using fear tactics or bullying. That just breeds distrust and toxicity. Great leaders don't brag about how tremendously brilliant they are all the time either or about how much people adore them. Great leaders don't have to puff themselves up at all. Great leaders inspire people inspire people to take action, inspire people to become better themselves. Great leaders move us. Great leaders ignite something inside of us that makes us want to follow them. Great leaders cause amazing things to happen. Um, and I'm sure you can think of great leaders in, in the world. You know, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., they didn't lead with brute power and force. They led with ideas. They led with dignity, with persistence, with drive, and and with humility. And great leadership doesn't need to be front and center stage either. It's entirely possible to be a great leader and not be in the spotlight at all. And one of my um, favorite quotes from Mother Teresa is this, not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. So I think humility is a beautiful leadership quality. Number four is share success. We like credit and we like credit where credit is due for sure. But with leadership, if you're going to be a great leader, uh, you, you need to be a bit more collaborative. Ideas are generated as a group. Often we have to hold each other up and cheer each other on as we uh, attain success. So if you are being a leader in your role and what you do helps someone else succeed, then yes, you should be acknowledged, but so should the other person. It works both ways. If you succeed because somebody else helps you to, then a great practice is to be aware of that and to be willing to give a shout out to the other person. Leadership is all about the how, how you lead. And there's there's really no room for huge ego. There's no room for making it all about you. You're working as a key piece of a team full of key roles. And, uh, and so your willingness to share in the success as a leader will take you a lot farther than, uh, you know, having people bow down to you as a leader. Uh, number five is to keep your head up. And by this, I don't mean being overly optimistic, although I, I was recently called a pathological optimist by a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to take that. Uh, but what I mean by keeping your head up is not to focus only on your work at hand, but as a leader, be looking ahead, be thinking about how you can make things more efficient, how you can make things work better in your area. Look for opportunities. A great leader looks up once in a while, see what's happening around them. And, uh, you know, think ahead, anticipate change. It's, it's sometimes really easy just to do our own work and to go home and not to look around at all. But again, you're here. So, uh, you know, you might as well look up a little bit. So, you know, what, what are you willing to look up and notice? Uh, where are there opportunities to take the leader to be innovative or to be creative? You know, are you willing to risk? Are you willing to be courageous enough to abandon the past and set out into the next new thing. Number six is to be assertive. A great leader is an assertive leader, and that doesn't mean being aggressive or bossy. It means respecting others and being respectful of yourself as well. And maybe you already are assertive. I have found this to be a difficult thing for students to learn sometimes as uh, some people are very shy or, or just non-assertive or passive by default. So uh, it can be a challenge to learn, but assertiveness, like anything else, can be learned. You can learn to be more assertive. 
Uh, a great leader doesn't exert authority where she has none, but does where she can. So that's something else to keep in mind is, um, is to be assertive within your role. Assertiveness invites respect and respects other people. And it's always an admirable leadership quality. And again, it can be learned for sure. And the last thing, the last uh, thing you can do is to embrace enthusiasm. Great leaders are enthusiastic about what they do. You know, body language speaks volumes, not just the words that you say, but how you say them and, and what you don't say. And enthusiasm, and I don't mean pretend or fake enthusiasm, it has to be real, but enthusiasm is infectious. I think of every time I pass Miguel's hot dog stand, I look forward to the, hello, Jen, and the enthusiastic wave I get, even if I don't have time to stop and talk because I'm running into the grocery store to get something. I still feel like I matter even just for one moment, and that is leadership. You can do that. A smile does absolute wonders. You can test this out. I know psychologists have. People gravitate toward positive energy, and most great leaders have at least a little bit of that charisma. So here's what we've talked about today. Leadership doesn't have to be tied to your role. How you conduct yourself matters even more than the words that you use. We've all had some kind of leadership experience. We are able to recognize the traits of a good leader because we've experienced them. We've seen it. So we know what it looks like. We've talked about why being a leader might be important. We looked at reasons why you are in the perfect position to be one. Remember, you can set the tone in the workplace each day. You're expected to work with some autonomy. You solve problems. You're flexible. You're dependable. You're trustworthy, intelligent, honest, courageous, confident, persistent, and thinking about the future. Then we talked about seven ways to be a great leader, that it's a choice, that it's connected to your why and to your core values and and, uh, to what is most important to you in this life, why you are doing what you are doing beyond just for the paycheck. We talked about it being a choice to be lived into. We talked about excelling at your work, about being humble, about sharing success with others, and about keeping your head up and your eyes open to new opportunities as they might come along. We talked about great leaders needing to be assertive and enthusiastic, at least a little bit enthusiastic about what it is that you're, that, that you're doing. So my new saying, my saying, I've had it for a while now, is you've got this. It's not my saying. I just like it. Uh, um, you can. You can make a difference in any role you're in with the principles and topics that we've discussed today. Your core values, what you care deeply about in life, come into play when improving your skills as a leader. Relationship building like the hot dog man does um, is key, you know, but you can do this. You have what you need. Becoming a leader, a great leader, only requires practice. It requires self-reflection and some honesty around that, uh, some patience, um, and some effort. It doesn't have to cost you anything but that, but some time, some persistence, some practice, and and again, some honesty about where you need to strengthen some of of your skills. So thank you for listening. That was rather long today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave me a comment or send me an email or or a voicemail with the, um, the SpeakPipe app that's on the side of your screen. If you have enjoyed this, I'd really appreciate uh, that you share this with someone who could use a boost, someone who could use some motivation or even just a kick in the pants to get get going and, uh, and to becoming a great leader. In everything that I do, I want to help people. And so if you could help me by just taking a moment to spread the word, then I will be able to fulfill my mission, that is to encourage, to engage, and to empower even more people to... Uh, to uh, fulfilling their dreams by, uh, by great communication. So until next time, this is Jen Swanson saying, yes, you can do this.